Good morning. Welcome. We're so happy to have you here this morning. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, especially to those of you who are visitors, in particular the Boy Scouts who are here to help in our, uh, in our Memorial Day uh, celebration outside right after this service at 1030. Um, so we are going to have a an abbreviated everything today. We cut down on some of the scriptures. We cut out some of the liturgy. Um, and my my uh, sermon is going to be very, very brief, uh, which actually for this week is probably appropriate because I don't know that there are words uh, to say for the what we're experiencing in the world today. Um, we will have a, a few moments of silence uh, during uh, the right after during the si sermon time, uh, where we remember the tragedy in uh, Texas this week. Also, I want to remind you about uh, the p picnic, Cedar Church picnic. We oh yeah, David's bringing he he's my lovely assistant today. He looks just like Vanna. <coughs> Yeah, yeah. He's not turning a letter. He's encouraging you to put, fill out your little name. Uh, you have a food sign-up form, which is on the piano, and you have um, an opportunity to sign up over here. Maggie has made both of these lovely uh, things and has asked us to sign up so we know how many people to expect, about how much food, what kind of food, so just so we have that information. So. Uh, it is. Lots of nice air moving through. We found out that even when we were out there, when it was like really awful heat. A thousand there, degrees. I'm pretty sure it was a thousand degrees. There was still a breeze blowing through that pavilion. There was. It is amazing. So, you yeah. Know, like, come. It's yeah, it's, fun. it is fun. And, it, uh, and you can come. We start at 11. We have lunch at noon. And um, we have a lot of fun. But if you can only come for a part, that's okay. We don't mind at all. Come and come and go as you wish. Uh, any other announcements? Ham and cheese. Ham and cheese. Oh, ham and cheese sign-ups up here. Phyllis, I need you to sign me up for some. Give me six. Thanks, Phyllis. Craig isn't going to, right now, Craig's staying downstairs, and he's not coming into the service. Um, and he's got a lot of travel to do, and he doesn't want to take a chance on getting sick or on making anybody else sick. So um, welcome to those of you who are outside in the parking lot. Hi, parking lot people. Oh, they're out there in force today. And welcome to those of you who are joining us on Facebook. <clears throat> We're so happy to have you. And to those of you who will be joining us later on on YouTube. Next week, wear red. Next week, wear red. It's Pentecost, and we'll be celebrating with the confirmands um, from this year. We have two Lutheran and two UCC confirmands, and we're so excited that uh, they'll be joining us. Um, <clears throat> and I believe that is all. So after, uh, at, the, at the end of our service, we will be moving outside to the memorial. There will be... And there, yeah, you have to pick up a second bulletin. There's a Memorial Day one that does not look like this. It has Memorial Day on the front of it. There you go. David's got his. Um, so <clears throat> be sure and pick up a second bulletin so you can participate in that service. Thank you to all of you because I know some of you are here to help with that. So thank you so much uh, for being here to, to, be, to help us celebrate Memorial Day. And now my friends. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia.
I invite you to rise in body or spirit. A new day has begun. Hope wins. A fresh start is granted. Faith wins. Today you have the opportunity to do something new. Hope wins. Jesus the Christ is entering your life in a new way. Faith wins. Come, let us worship God who is inviting us into life in a new way, a way that transcends death, a way of hope and faith. Love wins. Let us worship Christ, who overcame death to give us new life. It is possible to hear in Jesus' high priestly prayer, a prayer he offered shortly before his death, the petitions of the ascended Christ for his own throughout history to our day and beyond. Jesus prays for us. In holy baptism, we become believers in God, have our robes washed in the flood of Christ's forgiveness, and receive the gift of life forever with all the saints. Let us pray. Holy One, you come to us as a flash of lightning, an uncontrollable source of energy and power even while we try to keep you safely within the confines of our liturgy, hymns, and the theology of your spirit continues breaking forth in new and unexpected ways, reminding us that you are the one in whom the whole earth rejoices. In this time of worship and prayer, loosen our chains, open our hearts, that we may hear and respond to the Spirit's, Spirit's call. call. Amen. While we claim to celebrate the ascension of our Lord, the way we live proclaims our lack of faith in his power to deal with the world. Let us confess the incongruity between our faith and practice. Let us pray. We come, O Lord, on this day of glory to confess our lack of trust. While we sing of your lordship over all creation, we have too often acted as though you are powerless in the face of today's events. Help us to live with confidence in your presence and in hope for life with you forever. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. My friends, God's love is never bound by our limitations and failures. It rises renewed in each moment, waited, waiting upon the pathway of life to author, offer us grace. The chains with which bind our lives are torn apart by the power of God's gift of forgiveness. Thanks be to God.
You may be seated. The reading of Acts is from first Acts, beginning at the first verse. Before he is lifted into heaven, Jesus promises that the missionary work of the disciples will spread out from Jerusalem to all the world, and that the disciples will be accompanied and empowered by the Holy Spirit. His words provide an outline of the book of Acts. Luke writes, in the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit, not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, with, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven, Suddenly, two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Psalm 47. The high point of the psalm, verse 5, in which God has gone up with a shout, may refer to a professional in worship demonstrating that God is enthroned in the heavens. The theological meaning is that, that, is that, that God rules over all nations, indeed of the entire universe. Israel rejoiced in being God's people, but also in knowing God as Lord of all, not just some local deity. Clap your hands for all you nations, shout to the God with cries of joy. For the Lord Most High is awesome, the great King over all the earth. He subdued nations under us, peoples under our feet. He chose our inheritance for us, the pride of Jacob whom he loved. God has ascended amid shouts of joy, the Lord amid the sounding of trumpets. Sing praises to God, sing praises, sing praises to our King, sing praises. For God is the King of all the earth. Sing to him a psalm of praise. God reigns over the nations. God is seated on his holy throne. The nobles of the nations assemble as the people of the God of Abraham. For the kings of the earth belong to God. He is greatly exalted. Thanks be to God. This morning's gospel comes from Luke 24. On the day of his ascension, Jesus leaves his disciples with a commission, a blessing, and a promise of the Holy Spirit.
Listen to the gospel of Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Christ. Then Jesus said to the eleven and those with them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and arise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and the forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name in all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things, and see, I am sending you upon you what my father promised so stay here in the city until you have been clothed from on high and then he led them out as far as bethany and lifting up his hands he blessed them and while blessing them he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven and they worshiped him and returned to jerusalem with great joy and they were continually in the temple blessing god this is the good news. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Let's be in the spirit of prayer. Almighty God, your blessed Son, our brother and Savior, Jesus Christ, ascended far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. Mercifully give us faith to trust that, as he promised. He abides with us on earth to the end of time, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And I'd like to invite CJ to come on down. How are you? I love your shark. Wow, what a cool shirt. Can you make room for me? There you go. I, oh, it's a shark and a crab. I like that. Very nice. <laughs> How are you? How are you today? Are you good? Yeah? Good. I'm very happy to hear that. Do you all know what today is? Tomorrow, actually, but we're celebrating today. It's a day called Memorial Day. Do you know what memorial means? Probably not. It's a big word for a little boy. It means to remember. Do you know what that means? Sure, you know what to remember means. You remember all kinds of things. You remember when it's time to go to bed, and you remember when it's time to pray, and you remember when it's time to have a meal, right? You remember that you have to put on your shoes. You remember that you have to get dressed before you go outside, right? You can remember all kinds of things. And my tablet. He remembers his tablet. Oh, and your <laughs> tablet. Yes, of course. Your iPad, of course. <laughs> of course you can remember where that is, sure. Yeah, but you know what? This is a different kind of remembering because today and tomorrow we remember people who fought, in, who fought in wars and who served in the Army and the Coast Guard and the Navy and the Marines and the, what didn't I say, Mar uh, the Air Force, thank you. And uh, so we remember all of those people who are in the service. <laughs> uh, uh, I can do that too. Eh? I bet they can all do that. Can you do this? Eh? 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 Look at them. They won't do it. Look, they're not gonna, willing to be silly this morning. <laughs> but you know what? Remembering is a very good thing. And we remember that people gave their lives so that we might live free. And that is a wonderful gift. And we're grateful for it, right? So let's have a prayer. Yeah. We bow our head. There we go. Good job, CJ. Good job. God, we're so grateful for all those who serve, 
who have served and for those who made the ultimate sacrifice. Please, God, we pray, be with their families, comfort and remind them that their service was not in vain. And for that, we give you thanks. Amen. Amen. Thanks, pal. <laughs> I neglected to announce during the, uh, during the announcements, thanks to Carol Haynes, who came this week and helped me decorate the altar. It looks so beautiful, thanks to her uh, lovely additions. And uh, so I'm very grateful for that. Now let's be in the spirit of prayer. Holy God, we give you thanks. We give you thanks for this day. We give you thanks for all God's people. And we ask you to help us make sense of the events of the week. Help us remember Amen. <clears throat> so um, I said to Craig on Monday, uh, he was away this week, and I said, oh, he said, do you, because usually I start reading for my sermon on, on Monday, and I was like, oh, I, I don't need to worry about it. I, it's it's, it's going to be like, you know, it's going to be short, like three minutes is all I've got time for, so it'll be a breeze. And then the rest of the week happened. And getting up in a pulpit after, after watching the news events from Uvalde, Texas, I knew that I, could say not, I couldn't say nothing. I couldn't just ignore the fact that this happened. <clears throat> I also couldn't ignore the fact that just last week I stood right here in this pulpit and promised us all that there was hope breaking forth even now. It's a hard morning. It's a hard morning. But I do know that when things are hard in our lives, God is right there for us. <clears throat> I kind of would like sometimes, every once in a while, a God that just came down and waved his magic wand and made everything okay. But we don't, our God doesn't operate that way. Our God gives us free will to live our lives as we choose. And sometimes other people's choices impact our own. Jesus ascended into heaven. This is the day that we remember it. His ascension, he had just been hanging out with the disciples, having a good time, and then all of a sudden, I think maybe they might have sort of tricked themselves into thinking that, oh, that, that death thing wasn't really going to happen. He came back. He rose again like he said. Now we've got him. But that was not to be. A poet and priest named Malcolm Geet wrote this poem about the ascension, and it's lovely. We saw his light break through the cloud of glory, 
whilst we were rooted still in time and place, as heaven became a part, as earth became a part of heaven's story and heaven opened his human face. We saw him go and yet we were not parted. He took us with him to the heart of things, the heart that broke for all the brokenhearted is whole and heaven-centered now, and sings, sings in the strength that rises out of weakness, sings through the clouds that veil him from our sight, whilst we ourselves become his clouds of witness, and sing the waning darkness into light, his light in us, and ours in him concealed which all creation waits to be revealed. What a lovely image, right? Because there's been a lot of darkness this week, but we together, we sing that waning darkness into light. The heart that broke for all the brokenhearted. And there have been many, many, many broken-hearted people this week. Is heaven-centered now? I can imagine. I can imagine those disciples just standing there, looking up, mouths dropped open, thinking, what now? Probably an expletive was in there. You know, what do we do now without him? And what we do is kindle that light, kindle the hope, sing the darkness into light. At this time, I have a prayer that was written by Maren Tirabassi. She's a UCC pastor and poet. And Maren has written a beautiful prayer. At the end of the prayer, we're just going to have some quiet time while we remember. Let's be in the spirit of prayer. God, rock the weeping parent of Uvalde, Texas, in your tender arms. Ease the fear and pain of brothers and sisters and sit beside them in their nightmares. Companion where comforting fails and hold those who grieve Eva Morales and Irma Garcia. Ease the hearts of emergency responders of medical teams working still with families of the injured. Give calm moments in the tornado of loss, guilt, confusion of family and friends of Salvador Ramos, especially those who know and love his grandmother. Be with teachers and counselors of the Robb Elementary School. The school ends abruptly to recognize trauma among the survivors this month and for years to come and bring counselors to the counselors who will hold this in their hearts and teach us all the things that make for peace be parent to parents everywhere who are scared who are terrified to send their children to school be teacher to the teachers with the right words to say and turn every school administrator into a guide and a light for the path to come. Holy One, have mercy, have mercy, have mercy. Amen.
set free from captivity and death, set free from captivity to sin and death. We pray to the God of resurrection for the church, for people in need, and for all of creation. Holy God, make your people one as you and your son are one. Extend the gifts we have been given by your spirit to all people, especially those experiencing division or questioning your love, God, and your mercy. Hear our prayer. Make worthy the work of scientists who look to the stars and planets, as well as scientists who look to atoms and molecules, bringing innovation and well-being to humanity through their discoveries. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Keep in our minds those who have died in war, both military and civilians. May we honor them by seeking peaceful solutions to the conflicts that arise among nations and peoples. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. grant freedom to all who are overwhelmed by chronic illness, depression, or constant worry. Especially, we pray for Marion, Dawn, Christine, Amanda, Richard, Wilbur, Dick, Megan, Emma, Terry, Nancy, Dawn, Kim, Ed, and Beverly, Linda, Scott, Debbie, Shirley, Michelle, Mary, Amy, Pauline, Jennifer, Alan, Joan, Dale, Hazley, Betty, Jean and Joan, Tim, Briley, Howard and Nancy, Nevin, Cassie, Darlene, Cindy, Barbara, Lorraine, Anna Mae, Julie, Brooke, Mabel, Ardella, Martha, members of our recovery groups, the Saffret family, and the family of Ed Fisher. Open them to receive health and salvation in Christ Jesus through the Spirit's gift of faith. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Stir imagination and understanding throughout the church in work the work of poets, theologians, and hymn writers. Lead us into new visions and fresh expressions of your presence. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Unite us with the saints who have died and been raised in Jesus. Train us to wait with eager longing for Christ to come again, even as we sense his presence with us now. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In your mercy, O oh God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving spirit through Jesus Christ, our Savior. And hear us now as we pray the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. Friends, the story is told of an old Sufi prophet who was asked by his neighbor to borrow his clothesline. The prophet replied, sorry, I cannot lend you my clothesline because I am drying flour on it. The neighbor yelled, I didn't know you could dry flour on a clothesline. And the prophet explained, it's amazing how many things can be done with a clothesline when you don't want to lend it out. The same is true when it comes to serving wealth instead of serving God. There's no limit to our excuses. But if our desire is strong enough, we can always find the means to serve God. Let it be so in our stewardship giving today and always.
Let us pray. We dedicate ourselves to another's freedom, O God, to bring the fullness of life to those caught in life's shadows, to offer grace where another's heart has been bruised. We offer for peace where another's violence has damaged, to offer a heart where another's story entraps, to offer justice where another's power has oppressed. Amen. Now, my friends, as people of faith, we have gathered for worship. As people of faith, we now return to the world. Go out to share the story of faith, the story of life, with the world around you. We share the faith in word and in deed, in speech and in action. As you go out, to give a living witness as you go out to testify to God's love active in the world. Know, go knowing that God goes with you, sharing the laughter and the hope and the fears and the tears. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let's really, oh, I'm sorry, David, let's really sing this one out. We need this song today. We need this hymn. So sing with gusto.
Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace. Tell what God has done. Thanks be to God. And we will dismiss immediately outside to go outside.